Kevin? No. It's Iowa. Eric Lee is a particle physicist, a neurosurgeon, a rock star, an astronaut, and an astronaut. It just wasn't enough for him. He had, and a crime fighter. He had to podcast about movies. Join him and his sidekick, Goofy Ben, as they talk. The adventures of Buck Rubans I cross the eighth dimension on the pod of dreams. He's a rocker. Doctor. Don't talk about that. You never know what it might be attached to. The inventor. Activate oscillator. He's a Philosopher. No matter where you go, there you are. The only hero, Buckaroo, 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 curse your bonsai, who can save us all. Evil, you're unstoppable from the eighth dimension, Venom! Launch thermal pod. Buckaroo bonsai is pure nutty fun. Buckaroo, you only got your thruster. What are you all on for what? The cult sci-fi classic. Run, run! In a dimension all its own. Real life Martians landing in New Jersey. Torito. We will fire a portable beam weapon. Vaporize the whole damn planet. If we blow this today, Damn. there ain't no tomorrow. Left, I said left. This is left. I mean my left. All left. Go your right. Talk to the president's calling about is everything okay with the alien space club and planet ten, or should we just go ahead and destroy Russia? Tell him yes on one and no on two. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. Which was yes, to destroy Russia or uh, number two? Hello, welcome to the Pod of Dreams. If you listen, we will pod. Eric, you had never heard of the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension. Is that correct? I had not. Those, those words were the first time you'd ever heard that assemblage of words in your entire life. Never. Okay. Until now, you told me to watch this movie. It was a mere mystery to me. It didn't exist in the universe, or even even in the seventh, the sixth, the fifth, any of these dimensions. It was not a real thing to me until you asked me to watch it. And we talked about the cast very briefly, and I also got to see your reaction before we started recording. I think you probably, what were your expectations going to this movie? Were they at least moderate? You know, I expected just kind of like a... <sighs> Like a eight, it's just an eighty sci-fi kind of like, I guess Masters of the Universe was kind of my oh interesting. Gen- I, I thought it was gonna be more of like a family movie. Oh, okay. For whatever reason, I don't know. I just had it had that like eighties family sci-fi vibes to which it, I mean I guess it kind of is. Yeah, I don't know that it's not family friendly. I think it I didn't, is. I didn't really, it, it has a stupid name. <laughs> was my only expectation, and then Rebel Cops on the cover. Like oh, okay. Uh, other than that, no, we yeah, we talked briefly about the cast. The cast of this movie is insane. Well, let me just get this out here. This is, without question, one of the worst motion pictures ever created. When you consider the amount of effort put into it, the cast that was assembled for this movie, it is it is a failure in all fronts. Like, I, I'm, I'm convinced this movie was written by a 12-year-old on cocaine. Otherwise, there's no other explanation. The bit we did to open this was Buck Rubanza is a surgeon who's also Neuro- yeah. a neurosurgeon. Yeah. He's also a physicist or astronaut, whatever. I don't – it doesn't Particle really – Particle physicist. It doesn't matter. Crime fighter. And he's also in a rock band. He's a rock star. Those are yeah. those are like his occupations in this movie that we learned ten minutes into it. It's, this is insane. Who would ever think of that and call it a serious story? And whatever John Lithgow is doing in this movie... Well, it's I not a serious story. So no we'll, idea. The the tone is all over the place, but we'll get there. So, uh, You I, don't I think start- this is one of the worst movies ever made? Like, if this, this has to be on the list of wor- worst all-time movies. Uh, no, I don't think it's one of the worst movies ever made. Wow. It's got, it's got two, and a half, two and a half problems. And the two problems are really big problems. The half problem is one I kind of oscillate. I, I don't know that i mind wow. it it's probably something that doesn't bother i kind of like it sometimes they don't like but there, there are two two big problems the fact that the plot is convoluted and weird doesn't bother me i like that it's zany and goofy and insane that's not a problem to me that there we've got this plot i mean you're right that it's very adolescent like in terms of the narrative it's it's silly to me sometimes they steer into the silliness and they embrace it 
and it's like almost satirical. But Christopher Lloyd isn't being silly. John Lithgow's no, that's, not. Th- that's the half problem. The, so different Peter people. Weller thinks he's in a real movie. Correct. People are actually are acting in totally different movies. That's the half problem. Like John Lithgow is full on comic insane. He's doing this bizarre Italian. I, explain it to me. I saw in the credits he had a dialect coach. I'm like, for what? To he's just speaking word Italian. Out nonsense. Is he's he speaking? Yeah. Yes. It's an Italian accent. Uh, it, uh, you can find it not convincing. I don't care. But it, he's he's going for Italian at any Why? rate. Why? Because he's playing a character who's Italian. And that was what the script But he didn't for. talk like that until his head went into the wall thing. And then he comes out talking all weird. Because he gets possessed by an alien. Who's Italian? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a serious movie, dude. This, it isn't a serious movie. This is, it isn't but, a serious movie. But it was a serious effort. They tried to make an actual movie. And it's 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 the worst effort I've ever seen. Uh, like, like Room. Room, it, like, that guy thought he was making The Godfather. And it's not. It's trash. Okay. That's that's what I think about this movie. Is that they they tried to make a what movie. What kind of movie do you think they thought they were making? What did you think they were Star going? Star Wars. No, I disagree. I think you they thought they were making that. Star Wars. Uh, they, I don't think they thought that for even a second that they were making Star Wars. Um, I see. That's where maybe I, I disagree. So there's times where they just like they Peter were making Spaceballs. This wasn't like a parody of a sci-fi movie. There's times where it steers hard into parody. I think, and this is where this is the half problem where it's like. Tonally, it's all over the place. The actors are all in different movies. Peter Weir is taking it very seriously. Almost all the good guys are taking it pretty seriously. The bad guys are not Weller. taking it seriously. Oh, Peter, well, I said Peter Weir, Peter Weller. Um, the, the good guys aren't taking it serious, or are taking it serious, the bad guys aren't. Jeff um, Goldblum they're, they're, is, I, I'm a cowboy and a surgeon. Like, that makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't yeah, I Yeah, he plays and it I, straight. Right, and, and it's, total, it's total makes sense, even though it's a ludicrous, ridiculous premise. And he joins like a posse where he slings a gun and fights aliens. Like that's what happens in this movie for Jeff Goldblum, and he's like, okay, I'll do that, because you know Jeff Goldblum was probably high on cocaine that this twelve-year-old that wrote the movie supplied while they that's made fine. it. I don't think they take it serious. I don't think they're looking at this like we're making Star Wars. I don't think it's serious, and we'll get to. Uh, uh, all right, I'm going to start with my first problem, biggest problem. Well, there's two. Pauline Kael loved this movie. She said it was pure nutty fun. Because I, I think they know they were making a ludicrous, silly movie. Uh, but we'll get to that. Two problems. One, the good guys are super boring. They're all very, very, very boring. Like, they have weird costumes. Um, they're doing weird stuff, but they're boring. They don't have chemistry. Uh, they, it's... You're right. It's almost like the Little Rascals. Somebody like wrote the Little Rascals, yeah. made them all adults, but zapped all their personality. They aren't funny or entertaining. They don't have they don't have a good back and forth. Uh, you know, Buck Rubanzai is the main character, and he's supposed to be this awesome guy, but he doesn't do anything awesome, really. What does he do that's so crazy? We see him do a, 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 he's doing a neurosurgery when he first meets at the beginning of the movie. Then he's testing this experimental engine or whatever to go to a different dimension. But he doesn't seem super smart. He doesn't seem super strong. He doesn't do anything that's interesting. He's just boring. He's not fun to well, be. He around. uncovers the plot of these aliens, I uh, guess. Sure, you. but anybody. I mean, but there's nothing special about his character. He just happens to be driving the car. And we don't see him do anything badass or super smart. Like, or really who crazy. is he? Who is Buckaroo Banzai? He's a made up. He's a made up guy that probably somebody else was. This wrote. a totally original idea? This movie? Yeah. So the guy that directed this movie. Um, worked with the guy that wrote the script and this guy apparently did and then this will tell you where part of the problem is so he created this concept of buckaroo bonsai um and and it was kind of this silly notion he'd have an idea and he'd write like 30 pages of the script and get bored and then start a new script with the, the same could character. Wear off. yeah he would just but he wouldn't want to actually get bored and sick of the narrative and be like all right i'm done with this and i'm gonna start a new one and then he'd just have all these like half finished scripts and so they they splice them all together to make this movie um that this guy wrote i mean this guy so the director co-wrote big trouble in little china right which is a movie that has action in it and is also sort of satirical and comedic at times and it balances and it's a way better movie i'm not like it's it's in the same sort of zaniness though like where it could go off the rails it's just I think they're the steady hand behind the camera on that movie with Carpenter is oh. what, but that movie's oh, yeah. close. That movie's close to being ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's that, see that, that movie is what Pauline Kale described this movie as. It's like pure nutty fun. That's what, that's what that movie is. 
This is sure. not pure nutty fun. This is just yeah. lunacy. Well, the, you're right. The direction is the biggest. Well, that's that's one of the two problems. I mean, the, the good guys are boring. They're not fun to watch. They're not fun to hang out. I, I don't want to be part of their club. It doesn't seem fun. They have all these people who are like, had this cult of personality around Bucker Bronze. He has all these other like scientists who join him. Jeff Goldblum was stoked to get to join the band. And then why do they have a rock band? Like what? Explain that to me. Cocaine. There's nothing to explain. It's not logical. It's just silly. It's silly. It. I think they know that it's silly. The whole thing is supposed to be silly. But see, at least in big trouble. It's like, oh, he's a truck driver. All right, this is a guy he knows. Now he's in mixed in with this big gang war. He doesn't know what's going on. None of it makes sense to him. Okay, that's fine. These guys all seem like that made perfect sense to them. Why wouldn't they be in a rock band? Sure, why wouldn't they have sure, guns they, and they play it straight. A gunfight? Why wouldn't the lady try to kill herself at the concert? Did that look like a serious scene to you when she's... I have no her head idea. Off while she's singing, and then she gets bumped, and then the gun shoots up, what and is... they think they think she's trying to kill Bucker Bonsai, so they're all pulling their guns out. That seems serious to you? I don't I don't know what to think about that. See, I don't think it will... Well, is, is that it, a it is bit? Jarred. That's a bit? I, I, that was a bit. There's times where it's clearly a bit. There's clearly where they're going for parody and absurdity. We'll get there. Like, I will get there. I mean, they're, they're, for the most part, I was kind of bored. I was, it was like I was waiting for a firecracker of craziness to go off and it never did. I'll give you an example. Like, the aliens come and they take the thing, the circuitry, whatever. Who cares? I don't care. There's a thing the aliens want to fly the spaceship, whatever. So Buckaroo Banzai, this awesome guy who's such a overthruster, cool dude. the overthrust. overthrust. Yeah, he's such an awesome guy. He takes a Harley Davidson bike, and I think we're gonna get a cool action chase scene where he's weaving around on his Harley Davidson, and it's gonna be exciting. He's doing some MacGyver shit where he's gonna do something crazy with his science brain to to stop them. Instead, he comes out. He does. does he a looks circle. around. Yeah, yeah, he's like, where are they? Where'd he go? He does uh, a circle and drives off. I'm like, drives wow, off, yeah. Oh. That is such a bummer. I lost like, him. Lost him. And then he shows up later on the bike. He he doesn't win any fights, as far as I can tell. They have these really boring, just like handguns. They don't even yeah. have like lasers. They're they don't cap have, guns. It's like basically cap sure, guns. Sure, yeah. sure. And they don't have that. There's nothing like he, he could design a cool gun. Be like, I want to be in the club so I can have one of these. No, they're just regular old six shooters or whatever the fuck they are um it, but why why a, are they crime fighters why do they all have guns that's part of the premise if you, can't, if you can't accept the premise you can't accept the premise they, it does, that's there's what nothing movie. tethered to reality in this movie it's it not is supposed just supposed to be tethered to reality it's pure nonsensical silliness I, I i don't think it's supposed to be tethered to reality i i don't i don't like if that's the problem that i think that's more on you because uh, I don't think for a second it's like name another well, movie like this where it's so unrealistic. None of it, none of it, literally none of it makes any sense. Uh, Star Wars: A New Hope. Well, no, they act like normal people in a nor in the if you if you accept the premise that they're they're in Air, space. Airplane. Um, airplane is a comedy. Well, see, they're, but this is the thing. There's huge comedic elements in sections where it's to me pure satire. Those are the sections I like the best. Um, I don't we'll get, name but, one like the band like that were there in the band is that a satire? No, I think when she has the, when she's trying to kill herself and then she gets bumped and then the bullet goes up that that bit of it is. But they're supposed to just be cool when they're. By the way, rate his shredding. What did you think of his shredding? I, we finally got some shredding. What did you think I, of it? It was it was okay. It just it was, I, I just I couldn't wrap my grade, head around. C plus. Okay. I couldn't wrap my head around. No, so like, if if you got some guitar shredding, it's worth a half star. But here's where the movie almost won me over completely, and then it lost me again. So, Bucker Bonsai calls the president of the United States, and the president of the United States is in some crazy contraction. Back is out. Yeah. And it's insane and makes no sense. And he's sitting there describing the plot. With, or, yeah, well, basically, he's describing the plot to the president who's just looking on with, like, the Joint Chief of Staff or whoever the fuck he is, some cabinet member. And it's insane nonsense. And later on, like, a general's talking about how he's barely holding his fudge and they're bickering. And it doesn't look at all like the White House. It doesn't look like the Oval Office. It looks like just an office building. Well, like, just, the, the one guy's name... Uh, uh, Doc Brown, his name is John DeBooty or whatever. And Big Booty. Going, Big Booty. And then he's like, <laughs> he's Bo- he keeps correcting Boutet. Big Boutet. Yeah. And, they, and that's clearly a joke. All of the aliens are named. There's a bunch of aliens. And they all have the first name John. That's not, they're not, that's not a serious. They're not like, this is a really seriously intellectually compelling idea. They're like, wouldn't it be a funny if all the aliens were named John? 
and we'll never explain it. But we, that's we, what this movie is. He snorts a lot. Oh, okay, all right. So, um, this is, what are the aliens <laughs> named? All right, we got. Uh, we'll just have all be named John. They're all just, every, every one of them is John. John. John Butt Crack. John De Booty. Like that's just their names. John Smallberries. John one. Smallberries. This is all their names. Just go. Just. Right, but when they had those thoughts, do you think they thought this is really artistic and relevant, or do you think this sounds funny? I'm not saying it is funny to you. Do you think they thought it was funny? Messed up on coke. That I don't were. think funny was what they were going for. I think he thought I, it was cool. I think oh, he thought it was cool. Like, oh, oh yeah, see, I, I think they're going for funny. But anyway, that, like he's explaining the plot that this general talking about is not older fudge in a place that's clearly nothing like the White House, and they're debating whether to go to war, and it doesn't make any sense. And I just started cackling because it's so insane. And it just do just it wasn't like a gut laughing, but it also wasn't just like a haha. It was like just I just started to lose it because it was so insane. They eventually say he's gonna go to war with Russia, and they give him a form, and it's like short order declaration of war. It's this like short form for declaring war. Yeah, it's that clearly felt a bit more like a strange love kind of. Yeah, that whole sequence is is a bit. All the stuff with the president a bit it doesn't even matter. It's just this insanity. Again, I think they're going for humor there. Later so, on. Richter teamed with producer Neil Canton to pitch the script to MGM, the chief of MGM Studios, and then they took it to 20th Century Fox to make this movie. These are like major studio heads that they convinced to make this movie off of pitches with ideas and the script. of the, Like, I cannot wrap my head around how a studio chief of MGM or 20th Century Fox were like, yeah, okay, green light it. So, Buckaroo Bonsai? Sounds great. So they're wait. So hold on. So they're let me get this straight. They're they're gonna go through space. So they're like astronauts or whatever time travelers. And then they're gonna be in a band, rock stars, and they're also gonna be surgeons. Oh, okay, makes sense. Go just go make it. Here's twenty million dollars. Like how does that happen? How does how does anybody convince another person to make this movie? And then get the uh, this is one of the craziest casts that we've done in, in this whole podcast history. Insane cast. Like. Top to bottom. Crazy. I just can't wrap my head around what kind of movie this is. Well, that, that's part of it. it. It is difficult. It's all over the place. Again, everybody's in a different movie. So, like, um, oh, I don't remember the, the actress's name, but she plays Penny Purdy. Again, not a serious name. That's not a serious name. Ellen Barkin is her there name. There we go. She's in, like, a serious, depressed drama. She wants to kill herself. Um, she's... She's playing it straight. She thinks she's in. She thinks she's in like a serious romantic drama. Um, all of the supporting cast on the good guy side. I mean, they're just all so boring. It was like I felt like such a waste for like Jeff Goldblum. The guy that wrote get... this movie also wrote New York, New York for Martin Scorsese. Yeah, I, 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 I again, I, I give the writing way more credit in trying to go. I mean, to me, they didn't do nearly. It should be, should be a sat. It should be more clearly satirical. That's what the movie is to me. This works as a spoof of spy fi movies, um, and, and it, it just embraces the insanity and the silliness. Like when the rednecks find the UFO and they shoot it down with their shotgun, you didn't? You thought that was serious? I don't. I honestly, again, I don't know what to think was, about this. Movie. I was like, there's such. They have a spaceship that can't withstand a shotgun blast. <laughs> what? What? I mean, the scene where, where Buckaroo Bonds like gets in the spaceship and he's driving it, like the the equipment makes no sense. Peter Weller clearly doesn't even know like what. Oh, okay, he picks this button up. He's like, oh, what's this do? It's like a can, and he's like, yeah, okay, turn. Oh, now we're look. Oh, shoot, now shoot the thing. Turn right. No, you're right. And the other guy's spinning around, and he's grab like. No, it's it's like if you and I, Ben, were just like, let's grab some stuff in a room, and oh, that pencil. Yep, that's the that's the blast. And you're like, okay, shoot him with the blaster. Like, he tells the guy to fly, and the guy's like, I- I'm actually a diplomat. I don't know how to fly. I mean, that's about the, the only thing Peter Will does. Things he they can see the aliens are clearly just like snorkels that they put yeah. in their mouth. They're like, oh, now we can see the aliens. See, I, think we have I think that's a joke. I, I, I don't that think it's a joke. I think they're literally. I don't think it's serious at all. think of a better way to do it. No, I think it's that. And the aliens look bad. And I think that's part of it. They look so silly. Like, anytime you saw the aliens, in their insane costume, one of them was wearing like a, a techno garb. I don't know what you call it. It was just like a bright. Uh, Christopher Lloyd was serious. He was the bad guy of this movie. He was, be, he was trying to be scary, right? He's in. He's like, I'm actually scary and threatening. He's trying yeah. to be threatening. John Lithgow is not threatening. The other time I lost it laughing was when John Lithgow was giving this like Hitler speech yeah. in this warehouse with all these aliens looking up, and he sounds absurd. 
It looks absurd. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. It's it's bizarre. Um, and I was like, this is insane. This is ludicrous. This is one of the craziest satires I've ever seen. And then it goes back. But uh, part of the problem, and, and this is, is the editing and the action sequences, the, those that they do have, are so bad. Because one, they're, they're, I don't think they're choreographed well, but even more importantly, they're edited to shit. You can't tell what's going on. Like it cuts and it's incomprehensible. He's even said there wasn't enough coverage so the editors couldn't like splice and connect the action. So you just couldn't understand what was happening a good chunk of the time. Like I literally don't know who's where doing what, how did this person get here? What's happening? It just didn't make sense. Um, I, I don't know. Like the general itself was a, was a bit character. I mean, I don't know if you think they were just going for a dead serious straight sci-fi movie, then yes, they failed horribly. Um, that itself would be entertaining to me because they, they failed in spectacular ways, but I don't think so. I think there's huge streaks of satire in here that really work for me <clears throat> that I really like. They almost won me over, but then again, it just gets flat and boring. And like, you think, okay, I'm going to have this stellar cast of all these awesome people doing all this crazy stuff. And the good guys don't hardly do anything. It's just boring. Every time there's action, it's boring and there's not enough of it. Um, the most entertaining parts are usually just the craziness of the aliens. The, I just I, like the redneck shooting down the spaceship and the guy just kind of falls over and I guess dies from a concussion. Like an alien comes out of the top of a crashed spaceship and just like falls over. Oh, it, yeah. It's this big giant ball thing that just rolls out and yeah. It, and then the guy that gets out is if he's like Jamaican for some reason, but he's all, also- yeah, all the good all the good aliens are Jamaican for whatever reason. And again, just a a crazy bit. Um Banzai. Like it's just just crazy. Uh they have clubhouses, they have volunteers, one of them has a helicopter. Um everybody thinks Buckaroo's awesome, and I, I don't get why they think he's awesome. I don't know what he does, it's so great, but um it is totally all over the place. And the the action scenes are really tank it. And the good guys just are really, really dull. Um, if you're going to have a guy who's going to be this, like, wizard, he should have crazy, super intellectual wizard solutions to the situations. And he just doesn't do anything. I don't even, like, his plan was to be tortured. And then uh, what didn't make sense? It's kind of incomprehensible. Uh, here's but... In May 2016, <laughs> Kevin Smith announced that he would be adapting the film for television. Amazon Studios indicated deal was being negotiated. However, by November, Smith revealed that he would be walking away from the project. So we could have got a Kevin Smith version of Buckley. I, I, I don't need more of this movie. I don't need more of it. Jesus. Well, they, they it had ended a... with a cliffhanger like Buckaroo Banzai will return for more adventures. Like, and they even had the title for the next movie. Yeah. Did they ever make it? No, no, not at all. They weren't. They, they because didn't it's a to. huge bomb and barely made any money. Well, oh yeah. Well, for all kinds of reasons. Also, it's just like a brutal summer. They went against Temple of Doom. They went against Ghostbusters. I mean, '84. There was just lots of uh, <clears throat> incredible summer movies that came out. Um, so that <clears throat> they failed mystery. But I guess the reason why I guess I see why it you opened think the so bad. same weekend as Star Trek Three. Yeah. Okay. Also, also with Christopher Lloyd. And the, Indiana the, Jones and Ghostbusters, the same weekend, all of those movies were released. Yeah, I mean, it, even if this were a much better movie than it is, it would have gotten clogged. How was Ghostbusters and Temple of Doom released on the same weekend? They wouldn't do that anymore. They learned Insane. their lesson. Uh, studios learned their lesson, like, oh, we're just not going to compete with the uh, Spielberg or whatever. But um, I, I, I guess the reason, the spot where you and I, I just, I think there was just deliberate satire and parody at various chunks not enough of it, and they don't go hard enough on it for the most part. But I look at most of these decisions not like, oh, these are serious decisions for a serious movie about a serious sci-fi situation. The whole plot is is nonsensical zanius. I mean, we're literally like two alien factions are warring, and we accidentally let some out, and then one alien faction is going to... It's not the plot that gets me. It's the premise of any of this. Like, Well, yeah, if you can't accept the premise, you can't accept the premise. There's, that, that doesn't matter. I just don't know what kind of movie it is. I, well, the, it, it doesn't know at times. That's part of the problem. That's like the half problem for me. Like, I kind of like how everybody's different, but it's also a really big problem because people, everybody thought they were making a different movie. It's almost like literally each actor 
just got to pick what kind of movie they want to do. Maybe they were. I just don't know how you can sit down and explain this to somebody like how how, I would love to hear Jeff Goldblum like, hey, Jeff, walk me through Buckaroo Banzai. Like, what was your experience like? You read the script that you auditioned and they what did you think when they told you who you were going to be playing? Like, I would love to hear his explanation on that. God, what a waste of Goldblum. It just, like, I almost Did would you know you just, were going to be a surgeon slash cowboy? I'd rather Goldblum was the lead. It would be a better movie if Jeff Goldblum were the lead, um, actually. I think the movie would, would improve um, with some Goldblum energy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure people have written about it before. I mean, it's, it, it is fairly singular. I don't have too many movies like it. Yeah, Big Trouble in Little China is the closest I can get, but obviously... John Carpenter is a billion times better director than, you know, this guy. Um, so it's not even close. And this is this guy's first movie. He clearly just didn't know what he was doing Here, in sections. Here's a quote from Lithgow. I've tried to explain this storyline to people, and it takes about an hour. I mean, it's that complicated, but it's terrific. Every time I tell people about it, I get so excited. Uh, I end it by saying, Buckaroo Bonds, I remember where you heard it first. <laughs> It is complicated. I don't know. I, I, like the, One of the funniest parts is literally Buckaroo Banzai trying to explain the plot to the president. And it just sounds ludicrous. While the president is in a contraption, that doesn't make any sense. And the general's talking about being barely able to hold his fudge. Like, and then somebody else tells him to get it together. Like, I, it's it just, it, it's insane. I wanted more crazy. It, it, so for a while, I was like, oh, I, I had to wait for this, but it's really unleashing the full satire craziness. If it was like back. Caddyshack, but like a sci-fi movie, is that how I should have watched this? There's no right way to watch this. I, you're not <clears> – the movie itself is confused about what it is. I think that's that's a why – even if it were better, it, it just wouldn't like sit with people. I think, yeah, if you take it seriously, it's a failure. Uh, but it doesn't work perfectly as a comedy. I don't know. I didn't know what to make of it either because there's times where I'm like, okay, this guy's supposed to be the supreme badass, whatever. I'll watch him and he's a badass and everybody likes him. And I kept waiting for that to be justified with the action and it didn't happen. I just think like him turning around and that, that Harley Davidson, like, oh, tough luck. Lost him. <laughs> um, uh, them's the breaks. I was like, this is the uh, badass guy. I love guy. the part where the aliens jumped over the little bridge or the uh, wall. That <laughs> Christopher Lloyd just goes like, ah! <laughs> he sticks his arms out, then he just jumps like 40 feet in the air. <laughs> See, as you describe it, it makes me laugh. Yes, I remember like, that part. The Christopher Lloyd... So what I was so confused by is like, there's certain points where you see him as Christopher Lloyd, and then like they'll cut to away, and then they'll cut back to him, and then he looks like an alien. And then they'll cut back, and then now he's Christopher Lloyd again. Without any rhyme or reason, like, why he's an alien and not an alien, they never explain that. I would just, like, blip of the camera, one take he's an alien, next take he's not. I'm convinced they just forgot to put him in makeup a few times and just sent him out. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, he doesn't have makeup on. All right, just go. Just film it. Just film it. We don't have time. So, <clears throat> I mean – First of all, your hypothesis is totally plausible and very, very likely. But they did try to justify it with the plot. So it depends on who's looking at it. Buck Rubanzai, somebody zaps him and writes a formula on his hand, um, which lets him see the aliens, some equation. So when Buck Roo's looking at first, he can see them as aliens. Everybody else sees them as normal. <laughs> when you're getting Buck Roo's perspective. Then the other inventor scientist gets it. He licks his hand and puts it on the guy's forehead and then he can see it. And then they all get the goggles and by the end you can pretty much the, always the, see them as aliens. The like bubble wrap, it's literally just like bubble wrap they put over their eyes. Yeah, I mean, oh, now I can see them. Even if they even if they thought, I don't think they thought it was serious, like this will look great and this is an awesome effect. If they thought that and then that's what they came up with, that's all even more funny to me. That's what I think happened. This, I really think they thought I, it was I think they were they're doing like, their this path. Is, this is uh, well, maybe I think this is the, it, it looks so stupid that it was entertaining to me. Just like seeing the costumes made me laugh. He's <laughs> talking about them jumping. It makes me laugh. Um, Christopher Lloyd getting annoyed that they keep calling him Big Booty and he's <laughs> it, it, Big Bootay. Like it's just classic. And then he, Christopher Lloyd and John Lithgow are arguing. He's like, you're never gonna make it. I don't like. Your lack yeah. of courage. No, he's in the like he's in like a big meatball when they're arguing. I don't understand what he was in. It's supposed to be a harness. He just turns around and shoots him. Yep. yep. See, as you describe this stuff, it's making me laugh. It is like only because it's so dumb. 
Well, again, you think it's unintentionally dumb. I, I Even if it is, I don't care because the dumbness is so entertaining and absurd that it, it resonated with me in chunks. The part where it's not being absurd and overtly dumb and it's just kind of bland and boring, those are the parts that don't work. But I didn't know what, just didn't know what kind of movie it was. Um, I don't know, like Christopher Lloyd shows up and the, I don't know, it's like, uh, I don't know, it, it, it made me laugh. And all of a sudden they're like, oh gosh, it's War of the Worlds. The the good guys are investigating. Oh, but what if World of the, War of the Worlds wasn't a host? Yeah, there's the whole Orson Welles bit in New Jersey. But they're taking it Jersey. serious. Like it needed to be crazier. And they're, I don't know. Um, it was just boring. And then when it goes for like drama, like it's supposed to be sad that Peter Weller. So <laughs> Peter Weller has this backstory where he, he had a woman, a wife. She died. We don't know why. Turns out the wife had an identical twin who looked just like her. That's Penny Purdy. She dies at the end of the movie. But spoiler, he gives her a kiss and there's electricity flows off of her and she gets regenerated or whatever. And like, I, yeah, the, the love story is like serious the whole time. It, I know. And it's one of the worst parts of the movie. I'm like, oh, I don't care. I don't care at all. This is really bad. Um, it's not interesting. I don't care about this guy's love interest. I don't feel his pain. Peter Weller is not selling me on it. He does a great job as RoboCop. As a person that actually experiences motions, I, I'm not totally sold on what it is. Um, anyway, I don't know. That's to me the big difference is the, the, Nutty absurdity, I think it was intentional, but it also doesn't even matter because that's the parts I love the best when it just steered into the nonsense, the, the ludicrous design of the creatures or the aliens. There are just so many sequences which are clearly satirical to me. Like I, I can't take those two hunters shooting down a ship that's traveling through space with a gun and it crashes. It doesn't get like just a hole. Like it, they take it down. You mentioned like. We have tanks. You you couldn't with a gun take down a tank. You, you think you sh- what if you shot a rocket, like an actual NASA rocket ship, with like a rifle? Do you think it would do anything? Do you think it would impact? I don't know. I doubt it. Never done it. Well, I, I haven't either. But I, I suspect that. I don't think you could take down Top Gun Maverick with a with a little rifle. But right, I don't think yes. I don't think the F twenty ones or whatever they are would go down with just one sh- like a hunter's rifle but i that, that it just was like so absurd and ridiculous um i don't know like the other like when the movie ends the closing credits they're just like marching through the sewer like it was just that, so and weird. that's the trailer i saw too where i was like what is this what is this gonna be because the trailer is you, you see peter weller walking and then well, all those people cl- climbs down with a rope down into the like whatever uh, storm drain or whatever it is. I don't even know what it is, aqueduct or something. And then they all meet up. They're like, "Hey, what's up, man?" And, you know, one guy has his shirt open, and they're just the whole cast is just marching along with the music. And, and those are the parts of the doll. I didn't. I didn't want to be with the good guys. I wanted to see the insane aliens and the comic set pieces. Um, I mean, you that, liked that was- it because it was so bad. I, I, I disagree that it was unintentional. This is where you and I disagree. But okay. if, if if you can't be shaken from your belief nope. that you won't everything me was otherwise. meant to be serious, then according to your terms, yes, I like it so bad. But I think some of the stuff is so clearly intentional. I mean, John Lithgow knows he's not being serious. John Lithgow isn't like, this is a fine dramatic performance I'm giving as – some Italian no, possessed. He's alien. done that before, though. He's just doing what the the script requires. Like, you want me to go crazy? I'll, I'll go. You see me go crazy. Right, but they're all looking at the same script. And he read it as comic. Other, if, if people are just doing what they want, not everybody read Do it as comic. You think he was trying to be funny? I don't think he was being serious at all. I, if you think you think that's a serious, read that Wikipedia page, uh, which we'll talk more about Lithgow's performance. He's like, he knows it's over the top. He knows it's crazy. He knows it's insane, um, that it's seen chewing nonsense. He is a, a more than competent actor. He's not like, oh, I, I don't think that he's going for serious at all. He knew that it was crazy. Um, I, I, I don't Maybe. think Maybe. I'd love to ask him. I'd love to ask him. What, John, like, if you're listening to this podcast, this to me. please talk as much as you want about Bucker Banzai. Walk me through Did it. Do you think yeah. you were making a deeply serious movie? Do you think this was a nuanced portrayal of a serious alien possessed Italian villain who really admired Mussolini, I guess. Let us know. Uh, I don't think so. Um, 
because <clears throat> everybody's reading again everybody's reading the script differently and the good guys are just so boring they were just so boring all the time they were just talking i was like this isn't uh, this there's is a movie insane. i think it's called midnight express that came out i don't know 10 years ago now at this point but it's like the same it, it's a way way better movie than this but it, where like the there's these like people that live in a different they live on earth but in a different dimension and the kid can like see between the dimensions i don't know i haven't, I haven't heard of it before no it's that's fine movie. that's fine I I mean, that's the idea there's... with this right they don't go to outer space there's all everything's on earth they're just in a different they're in the eighth dimension and they oh, have to... sure the aliens are in our dimension we only see the eighth dimension like briefly at the beginning right when, uh, well that's because they there. they know how to get to our dimension well now because right? because of buck Rubanza, yeah. he, he showed them how to he broke some aliens out um but okay, I, I've never seen the the car movie. Was it Dark Star? His, no, like, I've never seen either. Yeah, that that's a, a science fiction satire. I think overtly. I've never seen it. Um, I probably should watch it. Um, but I, I don't know. I feel like there's shades of that in this. And of course, John Carpenter is going to direct They Live, which I, I don't think it stole the glasses concept, but maybe. Um, you know, because you, you that is a thousand times better than this movie. Of course, I'm not. But it's also ridiculous. I mean, Roddy Piper is the star of that movie, and yeah. he says, "I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum in a ball of bubble gum." Like, and we get like a 15 minute fight between him and what is it? I don't remember. Right. It's David Keith or Keith David. I get the the names mixed up. Right. But, uh, it's a ridiculous movie, but like so much better and well, so okay. much. Yeah, if this were a real director, uh, like, it would be a, a, a much better movie. If you John gave Carpenter this a... wouldn't have them sitting in these little chairs yeah. grabbing like, oh, this coffee cup is actually how I can listen to your alien species. L- let me put it in my face. And, <laughs> oh, yep, now we, can, now we can hear you. Now we can see the aliens. Like, that's what happens in this movie. The, they just yes, grab something. it would something be a better the... movie if John <clears throat> Carpenter directed it. Uh, I, who could refute that? John Carpenter is a, a, an excellent director. Um, I mean, this guy's and I directed one other movie, and, and that was it. You know, and this movie lost six million dollars. It only cost twelve million to make, and it couldn't even make its budget back. Uh, so, and twelve million, I don't think is all that much in the mid '80s for a movie. Um, Triple yes, it, I suppose. You know, for inflation. I guess I don't know. I mean, make cost twelve million to make, and then six million comes back. That's I mean, you, it's half your budget. Um, they, and it didn't have any like traditional marketing behind it either, because I don't think anybody wanted to believed in it. So I don't think they wanted to throw any marketing no, money. At anybody it. saw this and be like, "What yeah. the fuck did but, you?" But make? apparently, they, it was just they tried to do word of mouth and talk about it at like nerd conventions and try to get people hyped for it. And it doesn't live up to the hype. I mean, that was one of the things. Like, I, I was like, sometimes it was like looking at a firecracker, waiting for it to explode, and then it just it doesn't. It just just sits there. You're like, oh, I was waiting for the explosion of. Of craziness and fun and oh no it's just 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 peter well i'm just going in a circle on a stupid bike doing nothing cool i mean what's the coolest thing that peter weller does in this movie as buckaroo bonsai this super well, genius guy does that the, the president loves goes through the mountain the like i guess he pushes his his tr- technology far he does something no one's ever done That's before it. He, the thing he does to set up the plot is the cool yeah. thing, his invention but after that he that's I it. mean, it's kind of the start of Top Gun Maverick, where he's going Mach 10 or whatever. Like, sure, yeah. they sure. Saw, he's like 100 miles. Out. Sure, that's fine. He has an invention. He figures out how to travel to uh, another dimension. Cool. And then that's it. And then then they run around shooting aliens awkwardly uh, and incomprehensibly. And so your he, biggest problem was Buckaroo Banzai. Oh, the, all the good guys, really. I mean, everybody. I was disappointed pretty much every single one. Clancy Brown, the Highlander guy, was kind of cool. He's so, okay. So he gets, I mean, he gets the like spider on his butt, and then he does he die? Yeah, he's I like, think so. That was unclear, but, he's but I think so. In the end, you know, he's he's walking through the aqueduct at the end. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he gets revived. We don't know. We I, I assumed he died. There was no cure. They said for it. His no death antidote. is yeah yeah his right his death is really. Uh, it's it's not all that exciting. You think you'd make it more dramatic if you wanted to be serious? They kill. It's one of those things. Like, do I? I don't care about that character at all. I don't care that he yeah. died. Like, I felt nothing. Uh, I don't so, even know who he was. Was he? He was in the band, right? Yeah, he's one of like he's in the inner circle. Yeah. Um, but it was like I was I was just really bored with all the main characters and the action is just it's it's really so it's a frustrating. terrible movie, Ben. Ben, it is literally one of the worst movies ever made, if you ask me. Uh, I, well, th- and that's fine. I'm going to ask you in just a minute. But uh, 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 well, here's the question: Is is this below Cabaret? That's yes. The, uh, this oh, is wow. the worst movie we've done. 
This is worse than Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's worse, but yes. Say it's close, but this Ben, I, I I cannot think of a worse movie that like serious people sat down with a serious like MGM Studios, Fox, 20th Century Fox, like serious producers, major studio, major money, big time cast, put together the it, like absolute dog shit. And sold it to us as like it's a oh it's a parody oh yeah no it's I'm just parodying it all it's a parody of sci-fi I don't know that they're selling it that's what I see you made a shit ass terrible movie and it's really bad and your special effects are terrible the acting's terrible the story makes no sense it's garbage this is a garbage movie wow see as as you describe it you make it sound almost fun to watch the the your reaction you have is it doesn't make it sound like it's an awful movie to watch because i don't think it is um i don't know it, it, i don't know who's selling it as that i read it as that it's what it looks to me i mean it, I, I there's no way to take that scene where he's describing the plot to the president seriously there's just no way to look at that and think oh this movie is trying to be serious right now i don't know how you can see that scene and think oh man they this is supposed to be a dramatic president deciding it, it, whether to bomb it, the russians how, what, how could you well, all of a sudden they're they're doing neurosurgery. Now he's playing at a, a rock show, and he's a big he's a, apparently some big time rock star. Like, how could you take that serious? How could I you don't. take and none of I it? Don't. You, I don't take it seriously. No, no, you're right. Well, in that like they actually made a serious movie. Like, I don't mean serious like it's supposed to be dramatic. I mean like these people actually tried. Like, I don't think yeah. you could say they're trying to make a movie. Like, they put any effort into it whatsoever. Oh, you don't think they tried? Oh, I no, think they tried. This is like a tax Ponzi scheme or something. This is not an actual motion picture. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. That is so fascinating so to me. This okay. guy was like, 12 million bucks? Okay, I'll, I'll use six to make a shit movie, and I'll take the rest and go to Mexico or something. Like, Well, he did. He is... came back and worked on uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Worked on that script. Nice. He's got... Got friends in Hollywood. I, his writing credits aren't bad. You're not like, man, these are just shit movies that he's writing for. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, whether it's unintentional or intentional is irrelevant. I mean, there's just absolute absurd nonsense in this movie that is unlike almost anything I've seen before because it is it's it's so singular. There aren't many. Uh, what movie is like this that you've ever seen? I, in your life? I've never seen a movie like this. And that doesn't that doesn't make it even slightly compelling no, to you that you've never seen. No. You're not like I've never no, seen a movie you know, before like this. What I've seen yeah. a movie like this when I was 12, and we would have a camcorder and we would make like a sci. It's like, hey, let's do a sci-fi movie, and we're like, yeah, okay, all right. So you stand up there, and yeah, you're you're like a surgeon. Yep. So you're doing surgery, and then the aliens come out. No, no, you're not in a rock man. And then this now you're gonna have a gunfight. Like that. That's that. Those were literally the movies we made when we were 12 years old. It was like this kind of shit. Did you get John Lithgow to no, read your crazy that's, words? That's what I'm saying. That's the crazy thing is these are adults and they had actual money and serious actors to do it is See, what makes that, no that sense to me. That sounds so appealing to me. Like something with a 12-year-old sensibility, uh, which is, is crazy and nonsensical with actual like top-rate actors. Um, that that doesn't sound to me like a boring movie that I that's would That's what this is. No, that, that that is bad. That's just bad. I, bad or not, it's entertaining. Like that sounds like a movie I'd want to see. Like, oh, okay, we're gonna get. I think a bunch that's of- what Star Wars was. It was George Lucas. Like, this is what I wanted to see when I was 12 years old. And like, but there's some skill and care to it. Whereas this movie had none of those things. It had no skill and no care. Well, I mean, just. I agree. And- I agree. They didn't have the skill. Um, I think they cared. I, I, I don't know. It's like there's just too many scenes in this where. They can't possibly have been serious. We're like, oh, we wrote, we created a fake order of war form. Oh, because we're being very serious. And the president looks at it and he looks confused. Um, I read it as like, this is the, the, the guy that wrote this movie or director thinks like that's how war is declared. Oh, that, that I can't, I can't relate to that. There's just no way that they think that's how, I don't think, I don't think that's, there's just too that's many That's how scenes. stupid the people made this movie is. They think that that's how war is declared. Uh, wow, that that is a really unfair and ungenerous reading of, I think, a section of the movie that is clearly comedic on its face. I, I don't see how you'd write a character named Big Booty 
and think that's serious. That that's we're being serious right now. This is our serious. Because attempt. you do it in a movie called Buckaroo Banzai. The, like, whole, the whole name is a joke to me. I mean, let's make it absurd. It's it's just an awful name for a movie. Um, I, it's so verbose and wonky. And I guess he's Buckaroo Banzai because he's half American, half Japanese. It doesn't play into the plot really at all. He's not like being overtly. I mean, he's just he seems like an American guy. It's not like he embraces his Japanese heritage that I could see. I, I, I'm, I'm more willing to give it credit for having steered into satire zones, especially given that this guy worked on Big Trouble in China, a much better kind of movie that toes the line and also has a way better director. That uh, I, I think the sensibilities aren't, aren't serious for big sections of the movie. And those are the ones I like best. I mean, I, I, I laughed a lot at sections of this movie. And even you describing some of the scenes, which I, I used to supposed to be mad that it's bad. It sounds funny to me. Just, and now I'm going to be able to think of Christopher Lloyd jumping and you going, Wah! Just, sounds funny to me. Sounds fucking funny. A guy named Smallberries. Okay. that That's uh, such a stupid name that it makes me laugh. It's so dumb. But anyway, I guess uh, zero stars for you. Uh, half star. Cause the guitar shredding. Okay. Wow. So you got like <laughs> 10 seconds. I mean, this is where like the movie just needed, it needed to be a rock and roll scene. Like I'm like, it, but it stops in the middle because Penny Purdy's crying and we have to have the Penny Purdy thing happen. Like, I just want to see them having a good time. Let, let's, let's hear the song. Let's hear the whole song. Um, don't stop it because she's crying. I don't, I don't care about this see, Penny character. Like, Ignore Penny. We did toxic Avenger, right? Like that movie is crazy from start to finish. I, I got what, I got what he was trying to do. It made perfect sense to me. It's low budget. Like he doesn't have the money to make a expensive sci-fi super movie, but he's not trying to. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's funny. Like that made that made perfect sense to me. This was not Toxic Avenger. This was well, it's not. It's not. Toxic I'm trying Avenger. to make a serious sci-fi movie. I don't have a lot of money, but I got this cool cast and I have these crazy, crazy ideas. Let's just throw it all against the wall and let's just do it. Let's just fucking do it. I don't care if it doesn't make sense. I don't care if it's not funny or if it's not serious or whatever. Like, just do it. Just, like, make it. Like, let's make it. I don't care. And that may be. it's just a disaster. It's an abject disaster. Oh, see, it's an entertaining disaster to me. I mean, I, I give it three stars because I, I, it, it is very singular, which in and of itself makes a movie. I'm glad it exists. Like, I, I'm happy this movie exists in reality. Um, and there's times that it was genuinely entertaining, even if, even if it's because – they tried to make a serious movie and this was their best effort and they didn't want a single beat to be comedic or satirical. They're just like, this is, we're going to do this seriously. People are going to take the scene where John Lithgow is giving a crazy Hitler speech seriously. And they're going to be like, Oh, scared. They're going to be so scared of these aliens and what they might do. I, even if, if that was their, their music, this is going to be serious. It's not. They're in this shitty warehouse. These aliens look like they're just hanging around playing cards and they just look like random, just, schmoes they're completely like unimposing and they're apparently want to go off to some planet and fight somebody else because this guy was like hitler gives the this crazy speech which is just it, it falls flat and everybody's not sure where to cheer and it's anyway it there's nothing like this movie that i've seen in my life there are sections that are i think clearly satirical and funny or just so it, unintentionally funny because it's so inept if, if you're you take the eric lane camp on some of these movies the set design is so silly and goofy that I, I can't take this movie seriously, but it's entertained me. Uh, the good guys are boring. The action's so bad. It's just, it, it, the action is just indefensibly bad. They just didn't know what they were doing for some of these sections of the movie. Um, and the pacing is kind of off and the timing and sometimes they just don't quite set things up well. Like uh, Penny Purdy, she's got this creatures coming up to kill her, presumably. She's laying here and they've, they put like honey on her. Oh, the arm honey thing, yeah. And have like insects mess with her. We don't see it though, and that's supposed to be like scary and awful, I guess. <clears throat> but we don't get scenes to show it's scary, awful. And they put a uh, some weird slug that's gonna kill her. But instead of building the tension, right? In a normal movie, you'd expect to see it getting closer and closer. No, oh, it's gonna like eat her face or whatever it's gonna do. Instead, it just sits there, and the next thing we see is like Buckaroo swatting it away, and he swats it on the wall, and he's like, ah, oh, ignore that, and then let's focus on this other stuff. It's so bizarre. Um, it makes weird choices, either because it's stupid or because they wanted to make silly choices. Three out of five. Very much worth watching, I think. 
Um, but yeah, don't go in expecting uh, don't go in expecting Star Wars. It's not Star Wars. Either it's trying to be and failing, or it's not trying to be, but it's not Star Wars. It's not serious. It's not a, a classic sci-fi entertaining story. All right, Eric. You had a lot of options for getting getting to uh, feel the dreams. What route did you yeah, take? Yeah, this, I mean... The cast of this movie, I, I know I've mentioned it before, but, like, absolutely, that Mike Ehrmantraut, the guy from Better Call Saul, was in it for a minute, too. Like, he was, like, one of the orderlies at the mental hospital. Just insane cast. But I went with Ellen Barkin, so she's plays Penny, as you mentioned, uh, the whole time I'm watching the movie, I was like, man, that lady looks familiar. Like, how do I know her? Um, she is in Ocean's 13, the okay. third Ocean's movie. She's like the – she's Al Pacino's, like, personal assistant or main assistant lady. Oh, the one uh, that Matt, Matt Damon, Damon seduces drinks. with yeah, the nose. Yeah, he seduces with the nose, yeah. She's also okay. in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. She's the waitress that uh, Benicio threatens to – Stay the bus kill scene, the, the, yeah, the scene yeah. that ended your, that harshed your but, mellow, yeah. But uh, I picked the Ocean's 13 route. Uh, Don Cheadle is in Ocean's 13. He's also in Out of Sight, which is maybe my favorite Soderbergh movie. I love that movie. Uh, Ving Rhames is in Out of Sight. He's in Pulp Fiction with Frank Wally, who's in Field of Dreams. Okay. Yeah, there was, there was, I mean, aside from the main cast, there was also a lot of, like, side characters who are like, oh, yeah, um... Oh, there's that person. I've seen that person in a bunch well, of movies. Well, the guy that was putting the honey, that that dude's been in a oh, million yeah. movies. Both the cronies, both of like Christopher Lloyd's cronies are guys yeah. that have just fit in, side characters in a bunch of movies. One of them is the guy that's in Ghost. He teaches Patrick Swayze how to move objects um, at like the subway station. But I went with uh, Jonathan Banks, uh, Michael Ehrman Trout in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Oh, Cole okay. Saul. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go his route. He's apparently in Beverly Hills Cop. I've not seen that recently so i don't i don't know he plays a character called zach in beverly hills cop um you know we've got judge reinhold is in that movie and he's also in fast times at ridgemont high uh a very insane yeah uh early 80s uh, a boner comedy if you will eric back when um those movies were still you know thriving um and then forrest whitaker is in that movie that's an, and by the way that's another movie with kind of an insane cast um, Forrest Whitaker's in that movie and Forrest Whitaker's in a movie called Pawn a 2013 movie with uh, Jim, with or not Ray Liotta um, it's just one it looks like one of those red box movies basically it's just all black and crime and I don't know Forrest Whitaker's the lead and then of course Ray Liotta said Field of Dreams so okay well <laughs> anything else you want to say about Buckle, no, I, I disagree. I, you know, you just assume every choice was made by the dumbest humans on the planet. I think they were bad at making movies, but they had some funny, zany ideas, or at least things that worked. Now that's it. We're good. Where, where are we going next week? What's our next movie? All right. Uh, okay, so we'll give you a few clues, see if you'll get it, and uh, watch along. Uh, first clue: This is a 2023 film. It was released this year. Okay. So it's a new movie. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick was not released in 2023. Oh, see? Okay. Uh, this movie, one of the stars of the movie is an actor by the name of Marlon Wayans. Okay. One of the Wayans brothers. Sure. Uh, losing hope. Uh, one of the main characters in the movie is uh, a real person named Sonny Vaccaro. Okay. I mean, it's played by an actor, but it's based off of a real person named Sonny Vaccaro. Doesn't help me. All right. Um, Let's see here. Uh, The movie includes a a reuniting of two famous people that have worked together before. Nope. Unhelpful. They have a famous um, partnership previously a famous partnership previously I don't know um some movies about shoes it's shoes the movie shoes it's about shoes oh I don't know I have no idea I I don't know what this is 
Uh, the movie's called Air. Oh, okay. This is Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Have you seen this movie yet? No, not at all. Okay. It's on Amazon Prime. Okay. It's free to watch. Uh, yeah, it's a, a sports movie about the guys that started Air Jordan. Okay. All right. And it's it's no Buckaroo Bonsai, but I. Uh, sounds like riveting. I've, I've always wondered how Air Jordan started. I was like, man, I want to know what was the process to get these made and get the licensing rights and get the material. Like, how where they get the rubber? How they decide on a, it's a lot sole of rubber. print? Definitely about rubber. Like, they have to like workshop ideas and figure out support. And so you're not very excited things. to watch this, huh? I had no idea it was about uh, the making of shoes. I, it's one like. A couple of times it popped up, you know, like you, you, I think Brian Eggert mentioned something once in, on Twitter and occasionally like, popped up, but I didn't know anything about it. Um, I had no idea. I knew it was called Air. I didn't realize it was Air Jordans. Um, I, you know, I, I it's probably going to be just fine. It's uh, on its surface. You telling me that it's about shoes doesn't make me more excited for the movie, I have to say. Okay. All right. Well, we'll I see. haven't seen it yet, so uh, I'm excited to watch it. Check it okay. out here. Amazon Prime. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Big Gutierrez.